Okay. Good evening. Welcome to the very first Rebellion Conversation. My name's Anna. I am part of the ProDog team. This is Dr. Nick Thompson. And I will introduce him properly in a couple of minutes. I am, I'm just going to wait for those people who are joining us live to jump on. Um, but in the meantime, I want to welcome those people, anybody watching this back, I want to welcome you. So whether it's good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending what time of day you're watching or listening back. And apologies in advance if we if we get interrupted by any dog related <laughs> noises. I have an 18 month old Northern Inuit who's currently fast asleep in the corner or dozing off, I should say, in the corner. So I'm hoping that it stays that way for at least the next uh, 30 minutes. But you can never tell. You can be a little bit. You can be a little bit troublesome or even a bit of a loon at times. So. So we I've, will. I've got a dog whistle here, Anna. How about if I start blowing that? Oh no, please don't. <laughs> we'll be we'll be in uproar before we even start. Or a squeaker. A squeaker, yeah. He will. He's obsessed with any squeaky noises or anything. Oh dear. That sounds like that. So let's right. let's stay away from the squeaker and the, the whistle for now. <laughs> um, I can see a few people are hopping on now. So welcome, welcome to you. This is, this is the first of our, our monthly lives, and we're going to aim to share our conversations with experts, with vets, professionals, and just some really interesting people who are advocates for raw feeding and the natural approach to dog health and well-being. Of course, we want to hear from you. So let us know if there's any topics that you'd like us to uh, chat about, you'd like us to cover. Uh, we'll also be doing some uh, live Q and A's as well on certain topics. So you will have the opportunity to ask specific questions on, on particular topics as we, as we go along. Um, just to let you know, I don't have a view on comments. Um, but we do have uh, one of the ProDog uh, experts in the comments. So she's there, Alison, ready to respond to you. So throw in your questions, throw in any queries, and I'll also be checking back uh, the comments after. So please do still let us know that you're with us, that, that what you're hearing is interesting. Let us know what resonates for you. And of course, have your, your own conversations in, in the chat as well. And of course, the same applies to uh, anybody watching back. So the comments will be monitored by the group admin. So feel free to to um, to comment if you're watching back as well. So uh, now we've we've got all that out of the way. Welcome to Gut Health 101. Uh, and if you'd like to learn why gut health is vital for dog's health and happiness, and how to support your dog naturally you're in the right place and you are listening in to exactly the right conversation. My name's Anna, as I've said, I'm part of the ProDog team. This is Dr. Nick Thompson, otherwise known as the Holistic Vet, 36 years as a vet, is that right? Yeah. 26 of those years with a focus on raw feeding and holistic care, consultant to many raw feeding companies, um, across the UK and Europe. He's lectured and consulted in raw food, nutrition and medicine across the world. Uh, founding president of the International Raw Feeding Veterinary Society and most recently co-presenter of the Raw Pet Medics, which is a weekly Facebook Live and soon to be podcast or is a podcast now. It is a podcast, yeah, available yeah. on all your favourite podcast media. Uh, yeah, check it out. You can you can take us for a walk with you when you go and walk the dog. So yeah, good. Con Connor uh, Connor Brady, Brendan Clark, and I we get together on a Tuesday night UK time, seven PM UK time, and we talk about uh, nutrition, food, mm, regenerative farming. 
whatever really takes our fancy but it's got to have a some link to 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 raw food it's it's a lovely way to just kind of chat with your mates really uh, and now we've got the podcast so it's much more accessible you can listen to us on the tube or wherever you happen to find yourself yeah, yeah. so it's really good i'm a total fan of podcasts and and mm. I've always got something in my ears, so um, I shall yeah, be yeah. giving that a listen myself. Yeah. Alison's going to share the link to that in the comments as well. So if anybody's interested in checking out Raw Pet Medics uh, on Facebook, um, then the link should be there in the comments. So basically, suffice to say, Dr. Nick knows a few things when it comes to species-appropriate feeding. Um, and so thank you for joining me. I was uh, really looking forward to this conversation because gut health and the microbiome is also mm. one of my uh, favourite topics. Mm. Uh, I, I first started to learn about it in, in terms of human health and it's just, it absolutely fascinated me. And so when I started to learn about it from a canine perspective and from a, a dog's health perspective, to re realise actually a lot of the same principles apply. Mm um then it, it it just really um it's just really it just really fascinates me like i said so mm. so let's get into it great on so you go somebody we've... somebody said hope i'm feeling better because I've, I've been down with covid this week and so today is my first vaguely decent day above above uh the surface really so thank you very much i can see that i can see some of the uh the comments in the thing there but i can't see who it is so it just says facebook loser facebook user hope you're feeling better so thank you very much yes i'm feeling i i don't even sound like louis armstrong anymore i've been speaking like this all week <laughs> and now i'm a little bit feeling a little bit brighter the other side so thank you yeah all good Brilliant. So um, we have uh, a mixture of people in the group. So we've got people who are raw feeders. We've got people mm. who are thinking about raw feeding, who mm. are here to find out a little bit more about it. So mm. a, a bit of a, a combination there. So when we talk about gut health, what are we talking about? So from a physiological perspective, what, what is the gut? What is the gut? Oh, it's a lovely, lovely, lovely question. Right. The gut. Let's start with the real basics. The gut is basically a tube that starts here and ends down there. And we've all got this tube and it's fundamental. I'm talking about dogs and humans and everybody else. Yeah. And the fundamental. What it does is it takes the bits of the environment and allows you to uh, assimilate those into your own body which if you think about it is the most incredible thing you've got this uh, thing called a called a rabbit running through the field and you go chasing after it with your spear and you know as a as a caveman and you are able to then take elements of that rabbit and put them into this thing called a gastrointestinal tube and you that 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 elements of the nutrients as we call them from that rabbit then become part of you and you can burn them for energy you can use the protein for building strong tissues and muscles and uh, neurotransmitters and and everything else so it's the ultimate recycling mechanism which is so 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 important that's the obvious bit you know and it has various bits you've got teeth up at the front end and then you've got the the, the gullet and you've got the stomach for storage and what have you so really happy to look through all of that those little bits and pieces but what's really really important is that all mammals rely on bacteria from from here to the other end they rely on bacteria to make the whole system work. If you don't have any bacteria in there, forget it. You're not going to see tomorrow. You will not. You will not live to tomorrow because they are so, so, so fundamental. You know, bacteria were here on the planet billions of years before we even thought about crawling out of the sea, and they are as important today as they were back then. And they 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 run the show basically they completely um 
we are completely and utterly, utterly dependent on our bacteria and the things that we do, we as humans and what are, are we, the things that we feed our dogs and the things we do to our dogs can disrupt those bacteria uh, to our detriment. I could talk about this all day, so you're going to have to yeah. jump in and say, right, yeah. stop. I mean, <laughs> if you think about the bacteria, it's, you mm. know, some people might might know it as, as the term got flora or more, more modern, the more, more modern term is the microbiome, but it's mm. literally trillions, isn't it? It's literally trillions. Of yeah, you've got, you've got 10 more, the figures, depending on who you say, you've got 10 times more bacterial cells in your body same as your dog than you have got mammalian cells so you're actually more bacterial and microorganism than you are mammalian which is yeah. pretty mind-blowing actually yeah, it blew my mind when i when i learned that yeah. it really did but it, it's in terms of of what they what they have influence over in our body it's it's literally all systems isn't it all systems all functions mm. yeah when i was at college we were taught that things, things like the placenta were sterile and the brain is sterile and inside your eyes is sterile but actually now now that they've got the technology to to to, to look much more um in depth and they've got um uh, mechanisms where they can grow really really weird and wonderful bacteria they now know that actually there are bacteria in every tissue there's even bacteria that live in your cerebro spinal fluid which was otherwise considered sterile so they are literally everywhere and what's the one of the really really important things is that they talk between your gut and your brain we come everybody really knows nowadays that if your gut is not working well your brain work, work won't work well and if your brain is not working so well then your gut won't work so well and there is there are mechanisms which are inherent with the bacteria to make that communication system happen which is just as well it's brilliant and by the way everyone as nick said this this these principles apply to human and and dogs alike mm oh yeah if yeah 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 you know look after your dog's uh gut microbiome and look after yours if you know what's good to you good for you yeah and it's sometimes you don't need to do you don't need to do a lot you need to s stop doing many of the things yeah. that you're actually doing so so, so the same the same is true for dogs that question yeah what what are the mm. things that impact gut health uh, well the <sighs> The two main ones number one is number one is food obviously yeah because you've got to feed those bugs and so if let's talk about dogs from here on in as much yeah. as possible um if if you choose to feed your dog on an ultra process that is to say a a very synthetic factory diet which um which which are commonly known as the can diets or kibbled diets kibble this is where you, you get you get food you artificially bind it together you dry it you add extra vitamins and oils and and you stick it in a bag and put it on somebody's uh shelf for for a few months until somebody comes along and and, and, and buys it then that is a very 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 species inappropriate that is to say dogs have not evolved to eat this stuff it's very convenient for us silly humans but we are sacrificing we are sacrificing our dog's gut on the altar of convenience if we feed foods that are species inappropriate you wouldn't feed a cow a steak you wouldn't feed a horse sausages and yet we're feeding dogs with high, uh, high cereal, either dry, completely dried food or uh, canned food. When we've known since, I don't know, 60s, the 70s, that eating out of tins day after day after day, year after year after year cannot be healthy. And yet we've got this 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 lack of co joined up thinking that. Oh, it's okay for dogs to feed them ultra processed food, but it's not not good for our us and our children. It's okay to feed dogs on tins all the time, but it's not good for us and our children. So, 
I just can't. I, 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 I am mystified how anybody can can justify feeding kibble or canned food. That just shows for me how much brainwashing has been done by the kibble and canned food companies that it's off it's considered the majority still unfortunately yeah. uh professionals in this in this country in, in 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 the states in australia that it's considered that feeding ultra processed food to dogs is okay yeah it's the power of that that mark those marketing machines um over de like literally decades and i'm not going to get started on food politics because we'll just go off on a tangent <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, that is powerful, isn't it? As you said, and, and, and even, you know, even for me, um, I'm a relatively uh, new dog owner as, as an adult in my, I mean, we, we always had dogs when I was, when I was a kid growing up, but I wasn't yeah. responsible for them myself. But as an adult, I'm a relatively new um, dog owner. And thankfully for me, I was working with pro dogs. So I was very aware um on take, taking my dog on of you know the best the best diet uh, mm. for him um but prior to that yeah as a kid i remember it's just normal to, to feed dried food to the dog it was just it's just what what we did and, and yep. it wasn't it wasn't questioned yep yeah i think yeah i think i think the, the world is changing i think the the the, yeah. the, the, the field of canine nutrition is no longer 100 percent with the big food corporations i think people are you know uh what are the figures 20 25 percent of, of people feed some or, or all raw food uh in europe uh which is fantastic because 20 years, 20 years ago it was about 0.1 percent were thinking about raw food so there's been a massive massive uh, uh surge in interest for raw food and the thing is anna that the thing that sells raw food is not you know you and me talking about it and me doing videos and all that kind of stuff it's people give it a try because it, it sounds right you know it's what have dogs been eating for several million years um they try it and they can see the change for themselves they yeah. see that their dog's teeth get cleaner their breath gets sweeter their they they uh that their, their their coat is more glossy and soft and shiny and normal um they smell less the poos improve almost overnight in many cases yeah. um dogs are happy about dogs have more energy they they are more content after food they're more enthusiastic about food just about any parameter you care to mention is improved with raw feeding in most dogs so it's a really exciting and as i say you know you and i just like the blue touch paper but people convince themselves yeah because you can't take hundreds of thousands of people and say you must change the way you feed basically all you can do is just say mm, this is this is a new way of doing things have a look at it and they give it a go only only takes a couple of weeks they see the difference and they go, wow, why didn't I discover yeah. this years and years and yeah. years and years ago? And that's a story that I hear all the time. And it's yeah. so, so, so gratifying that people, yeah. people just, it's, it's like coming home. It's like, oh, feeding the yeah. dog properly and the dog is healthy and happy for the first time. It's unbelievable. It's brilliant. It's, it's just a beautiful um, place to be within veterinary medicine i love it i really do yeah well and we we love it at prozog and we love it when mm. on, on the service when people write in and they share pictures of their dog and they share their stories or they post them in the group and like you said it yeah. is really, it's really uh gratifying and i always say as you nick i always say to people just get curious just yeah try do your own i call it do your own science project do your own yeah. science project by trying it out just try it, it. It is so easy. I think we need to emphasize that it really is easy. And um, that, I mean, the easy, really easy way to do it is just to give uh, Anna and the guys at ProDog a buzz, or there are other raw food companies, but, you know, we're talking about ProDog. We like ProDog. So give them a shout. They will guide you through. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Give them a ring. 
even if you're scared, you're terrified, what have you, they've done this. They do this all day long and they're very good at it. So give them a buzz and they'll they'll guide you through. Well, just to say, actually, the best way is to contact us on, on our website, go to our contact form, contact us that way. And we do have, like I said, we've got nutritionally trained feeding advisors who can answer all your questions and queries. And if you and if you do need a phone call, then that can be arranged as well. So people can give you a call back and we can really help support you to iron out any of those queries or concerns that you might have and really help you um, get started and just give it a mm -hmm. try. But just coming back to the microbiome and just talking about that fresh natural food and how important it is for them for that diversity. There's that word, isn't there, of diversity. And that's where for the microbiome, as diverse as possible, is is going to lead to the strongest uh the strongest microbiome and um we 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 get good at kind of uh wiping out that diversity don't we we do inappropriate food and stress the stress yeah. is the other thing which which makes a massive massive difference um but yeah i think you know it's it's a really simple system really if you think of it if if you feed your dog those things that they were designed to eat, that is to say, mainly uh, uh, meaty material, organ material, bony material, and there's some nuts, herbs, seeds, and a bit of vegetable type material there as well, some, some, some herbs and, you know, and what have you, then that will fuel the bacteria in the gut because that's what it's always done for for millennia it's done it you know this the 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 um, the, uh, the 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 gut and the immune system the digestive system has evolved to deal with certain certain uh, food products and when you give them you you will see transformation with the with the health of your gut it's a bit like having a i don't know a steel factory and trying to put some uh planks of wood through it it's just not going to happen you know it's just it's, it's a work. steel factory so feed it steel so yeah. you've you've got a meat factory called the dog even a chihuahua even a papillon you know that's where they all came from was you know um prairie dogs and wolves and the gray wolf going back to the gray wolf initially that's where they all came from and they haven't really changed their their uh, functioning that much so if you've got a meat factory and meat when i say meat literally Ideally, a bit of skin, a bit of bone, a bit of meat, a bit of organ, heart and kidney and, you know, all this good stuff. That's that's what you've got sitting in front of your fire every night is a is a is an animal digestion unit. I.e., Yeah. See what I mean? It's an animal who yeah. digests animals. They're carnivores, for goodness sake. Yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, yeah, f f feed, feed, feed feed the right stuff to the dog and you will see the difference don't believe me don't believe anna don't believe anybody just believe your eyes and the glee on your dog's face when you present and with I, some real food i call it the raw food effect mm. let them experience the raw food effect yeah. so what what could be some signs of um that your dog's um got needs a, a little bit of nourishment and and some support because it's not always most people commonly think of gut health issues as mm. in digestive issues but yeah it's not always the case is it because it because it, gut health issues can lead to other other ailments conditions oh, yeah. And yeah oh very much so, so um, what, what, what could be typical symptoms that might be stemming from poor gut health okay so the simplest the simplest way to assess the your 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 dog's gut is the quality of the poos so i i, I do a, a, a stool what they call a stool score so a perfect poo which you can pick up with two fingers yeah which is very handy if you're in the park you have to scrape yes. something off off the off the park off the path uh so if if you produce if they're producing really nice firm but not over firm poos you can pick up easily and they're not too smelly then the chances are you've got a really 
good functioning gut. At the other end of that scale is a zero out of 10. And that would just be water where you just you can't for whatever you do that's a zero that's quite extreme and you've probably got quite a yeah. sick dog if you've got them producing that but what i find is that many many dogs will be producing a six or a seven or an eight and because they always have done the owner just thinks oh that's normal no you should be able to pick up the poo with two fingers and uh that's what that's what you're looking for so if if you do have to pick up slightly soft poo every day you might be in a situation where improving the diet will give the dog much better gut health by having better gut health you'll get, get better nutrients into the body the if the gut is happier then we've got these pathways four major pathways where bacteria influence the brain so you could have a less anxious and more calm and more more focused dog as well just from changing the diet so i would say the, uh, the 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 quality of the poos is the easiest way to look at but you'd also be looking at sweet breath um no grumbly 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 no eating loads of grass after every meal um really keen to eat food um a good appetite there's but i tell you what i know there's there's many dogs in this country where the owners go oh they're not very foodie but they are <laughs> they're just eating food that they really really don't enjoy they eat yeah, it because they have it. to because they're starving yeah. but in fact when you change them to a raw food diet it's like whoop, all of a sudden yeah. they eat like a dog you know yeah. boom, boom, boom. it goes down the hatch really beautifully so um so there you go. There's 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 a few parameters. Yeah, that's Still a, a few things. Yeah, people can look out for. Mm -hmm. um, and and what? So obviously we've we've talked about diet. We've talked about yeah. raw food diet. What other mm. things can people? So say someone's already feeding their dog raw. Yeah. What other things could help to nourish, uh, nourish the dog if they feel that it's needed? Uh, bone broth somebody was mentioning about uh, bone broth here so uh, you, it's very easy to make bone broth yes, uh, so is. very very simply speaking you just get some 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 bones or chicken carcasses put them in a pan uh, top it up with water you can put in a bit of apple cider vinegar if you like optional uh, make sure you put a lid on the top and if you can leave that to cook I use when I do it I leave mine to cook for 48 hours so all the goodness in the bone comes out into the solution and then at the end of the 48 hours you 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 gather up the bones and dispose of them because they're no good um if you want to reduce the fat you just take the fat off the top yeah. and then with the, the the trick here and this is we've discussed this on raw pet medics quite a lot is you uh you what we do is we use a ladle and you put it into a, a muffin tray you know the little kind of cake trays that you get yeah. Just, yeah. You just put them out into there and you put those very carefully into the uh, into the freezer. Yeah. And then within 24 hours, you've got all you've got these you know, 12, 24, whatever little biscuits of bone broth. Yeah. And you can then use those. You can just put them on the food and then put a bit of hot water over the top. Uh, or you can, you know, you can, you can have them yourself Just put them in a cup, top up yeah. with hot water. Good to go. Really, really easy to use um so you can you can use those and it's always good to have bone broth in because it's good for if they get uh, any tummy upsets bone broth is very good if they go off the food for some other reason bone broth is a is a real game changer yeah. um and it's very very healthful it's very good for the very young it's very good for the very old it's packed um, with minerals isn't it it's packed oh, with massive, minerals massive. yeah pregnant bitches yeah. This, they're 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 very few scenarios when bone broth won't be the answer to a nutrition question and such a good way like you said making it yourself it's such a good way so to use up all all the animal parts as well which you know mm. is we're all in favor of and yeah. um, but if making your own is not your thing pro dog we have just launched our new range of uh, bone broth Okay, so, good. Are they on the website, Anna? Yes, they are. Okay, great. So, got, so you can see those on the website. We've got lamb, lamb and herb, beef, beef and herb. We've got chicken. So there's there's a range there, and it's a 
a more uh, simple option. They literally arrive frozen. You just whack them in the freezer. Just have some of those on standby. Um, That's brilliant because some companies do do bone broth, but they've only got only got beef, uh, for example. So if you've got three different proteins, so yeah. guys, I, what I'll say to you is if you if you if your dog can't tolerate beef, then don't weigh in with beef um, with a beef bone broth. Yeah. Okay, uh, they may be fine with it, but um just be 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 aware and just start gently yeah because this is it's it's very 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 nutritious stuff and if they've been on rubbish kibble all their lives and suddenly their body's presented with really amazing nutrition it may just be just um take a bit of everybody getting used to that's all yeah it can really help bone broth can really help with that transition can't it did you say that already yeah. Sorry, i, did, I didn't but yeah it's, it's it's it is useful in every situation if yeah. you want a really simple one is get started when you're trans transitioning from kibble or, or kibble and tins over to raw the uh the bone broth uh it's high in glutamine and um glyc with these things called glycosaminoglycans basically helps to line the gut yeah. to uh and to help the transition of the bugs from not very happy bugs because they've been eating kibble all the time to really happy bugs uh what being exposed to real meat proteins uh in the in the diet but also in the bone broth as well so it's good as a as a transition and also as a treat as a little treat uh for the dog um you can use the bone broth yeah they love it they love it they totally do um, what about probiotics? What about uh, probiotic supplements? Probiotics are very useful, um, especially where there's been either some upset with the gut or where um, after uh, or after you've been using antibiotics yeah. um, or um, as part of the transition, you can use probiotics just to kind of smooth the way to help the body find a better uh microbiome profile on the new foods yes so that's definitely and um probiotics are very safe so uh, there's not really any concerns there are very few dogs who cannot tolerate probiotics and for whom uh, probiotics aren't very very useful and, it, and if people were were to be interested in probiotic foods, natural probiotics, yeah. as opposed to a supplement, what what yeah. would be recommended for for a dog specifically? Probiotic, okay. Uh, so probiotic foods, um, I, I mean raw food, it, uh, contains probiotic uh, bugs, and so it's very very good. There are prebiotics though, and uh, most um, vegetable type material is is prebiotic but yeah. one of the one of the biggies is uh chicory in inulin there's one of them is called inulin and that uh, you can add that but really just any kind of fibrous greens if they're very very fine this is my <laughs> me chopping them up this is if they're very finely uh chopped and added to uh to the meat that's that's a very very good thing to do um i i add herbs as well so herbs can be anything you like parsley sage rosemary thyme i remember that because of the song um you can you you can use those and they're, they're very very good as well remember that that carnivore dogs are carnivores carnivores will eat herbivores herbivores eat green fibrous material okay and so that's where dogs and uh and cats carnivores will get uh, prebiotic vegetable prebiotics and prebiotics help to feed all the good guys on the yeah. inside and maintain that balance it's all about balance isn't it everything comes absolutely. back to balance absolutely, absolutely. Balance the, the good guys and the bad guys yeah yeah feed the good guys in bacteria terms um Very what about if people wanted to um get into this topic in a bit more detail have you got any uh, resources that you'd recommend if yeah if you're if you're new to raw food and you're thinking crumbs 
mm, what will I do? Then I've done a, a, a video which is on my website. My website is holisticvet.co.uk, holisticvet.co.uk. And if you go to there, there are two videos. One is called um, Raw Feeding, The Basics, and it is exactly that. They're just 10 short lessons of how to feed raw food, the, the very basic uh, of, of, of that. And But I've done another one. Uh, a few months ago, which is um, uh, bones and how to feed them. Uh, so, so it's a, it's a very again ten short uh, lessons on how to feed bones, why to feed bones, and how to do that safely. So there's a couple of videos there, and um, you might find those useful. I hope so. Brilliant. Um... And resources at ProDog. Anna, where, where to, just to say again for people who joined late? So um, in terms of, of ProDog, if you would like any support yeah. getting started with, with raw feeding, then if you go to our contact form, which is on our, which you'll find on our website, drop us a line there um, and we can, um, we can answer any questions that you have. We have um, nutritionally trained uh, advisors who are there to yeah. offer uh, feeding advice and guidance and if you do need um, a call back if if you if you'd like to um, go into a little bit more detail um, then we can always arrange uh, a call back um, we also have a blog on our website which is just packed full of loads of information when it comes to raw feeding uh, and natural diet for dogs um, so lots, lots of resources there. We have, we obviously got our um, Instagram page as well for people who are, who are connected on on Instagram. So there's just a, a, a ton, ton of resources uh, there. Um, and I think I was just looking at, um, just looking at my my notes there. I think we've, I think we've covered everything. I think it what. If I think about um, my learning around gut health, and I think mm. back, to, I, I think it's Hippocrates saying that um, the gut is the center of all health. I don't okay. know. I'm probably paraphrasing. It's probably not the exact <laughs> the exact uh, quote. Um, no, I think you're right. I think he has. He 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 did say that. I saw that on a paper from about 2011 talking about leaky gut yeah so yeah i think you're right yes yeah, yeah he, he had it right even 2000 years ago well and that's what i was just about to say 2000 years ago the ancients and there's so many sort of um, um ancient philosophies and teachings that, that knew this stuff literally mm. years ago and and now it's just, thankfully because of you know what we have access to in this day and age, we now have this, the actual scientific evidence to to back this these theories up. Yeah. And um, and it's like I said, that for me, it's just a a, a, fa a fascinating um, topic. Um, but yeah, I think I think we've we've covered everything we wanted to cover. Like I said um, at the beginning, if anybody is watching this back, then feel free to comment. We are going to be keeping an eye on our on on the comments, the group admin, so we will respond to you. It's really great to hear how what what you've got from the lives. Um, we do have our next one coming up on the twenty first of March, which is going to be on the topic of yeast. Uh, that one, that one's going to be um, hosted by our Alison. Um, and just thanks again, Nick. Thanks for dropping by and having a having a chat with me about gut health. Anybody who who wants to connect with Nick, he's also you're also on Instagram. Is that right? I'm on Instagram. Yeah, Holistic Vet UK. Holistic Vet UK on Instagram or the website, which is again holisticvet.co.uk. Uh, jump over there and have a look at the vids. There's a lot of free vids as well. So if you want some freebies, um, then jump in at, uh, on the uh, on the Holistic Vet website. Yeah. And don't forget Raw Pet Medics weekly weekly podcast weekly lives. 
tuesday out. at seven in the uk but uh it, it it we record it onto facebook and we record it onto uh youtube as well so you can you can do there's a whole back catalog of uh of our discussions there to entertain and delight you brilliant thank you nick thank you everyone for listening in and i will see you soon Bye. thanks anna thank you <laughs>